Everyone, I am so excited for you to hear this interview, but first, Chelsea and I have something very exciting to share. So exciting. <laughs> we are <laughs> going to be doing a three-day challenge called the Soaring Souls Challenge. It's all about love, it's all about self-care, and it's all about finding ways to celebrate yourself more. So if you want to join, you're going to go to www.livewellenhanceyou.com slash Soaring Souls. It's a three-day challenge starting on March 19th. That's a Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we're doing it for three days. Make sure you're there. It's yes. going to be fun. <laughs> yes. So again, that's the March 19th through the 21st. We can't wait to have you guys there. Thank you so much, and now enjoy our exclusive interview. Welcome to Stress-Free Solutions. My name is Sarah Elise, and I have a very, very special guest with me today. Her name is Chelsea Blackwell. She's been on fire in both good and bad ways. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a very dear friend of mine. We've worked together. She's planned my wedding. And I just wanted to give her this platform to show you her because she's an incredible human being. I'm, I'm really, really excited for this. So Chelsea, thank you so much for coming to Miami and doing this interview with me. Thank you for having me. I'm so pumped to be here. Oh my gosh. Talk. I have so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many questions to ask. So this is perfect. <laughs> Perfect Let's balance. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, a lot of people have asked me personally that did know that you have been my business partner for a long time. And like, why, why this show? What was it that made you be like, yeah, I really want to go on Love is Blind? I just, I picked the show because I stand by the concept the concept is so so good uh falling in love with someone without seeing them i mean how genuine and amazing is that and the concept works the show has like the top highly lasting marriages out of any other reality show so i was so hopeful and set and i'm like dang this is it this is how i'm gonna be my person it's so on brand for me just out of the ordinary, something so unique that I really felt this was how I was going to meet my person. Yeah, it is a great show. And I've been watching all the seasons. And I got to admit that season five, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to watch this again. But then I was told that my girl was going to be on it. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I got I got to watch all of it, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And it must be difficult, though. Like, you're going in... You don't know anyone, obviously. You have no idea like how this is even organized. How did you prep your mental state for getting into the show? Yeah, it's intense. And I always seem to put myself in weird situations like this. Like always, I'm always doing something crazy. Like, and always by myself, I'm such a solo girl and I love the unexpected. So I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea how production was going to be. I had no idea where I was even sleeping, what our sleeping arrangements. I had no idea. And I didn't know how, you know, the lay of the land. I didn't know the schedule. And that would drive a normal person absolutely insane, having no idea what to expect. I obviously, like you said, I didn't know a single soul. I had no idea the people I was dealing with leading up to the show. I didn't even meet once. Um, I had no familiar face. I had no familiar, you know, anybody. So I was on this journey by myself and it was really crazy how I adapted. Like I adapt so well in certain circumstances like that. So I kind of just got there and went with the motions. Yeah. Cause you also have like these producers you talk to, yeah. then they kind of 
set you up for, you know, you're going on this date with this person, are you excited? Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? It was, it was nuts. It was just so weird. They had it down to a T of like getting everything organized and like the way the system was set up is so brilliant. Like, it's just so crazy how well everything flowed. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know that you rank people. So you go on dates with 15 people the first day and you <laughs> rank them. So I think you pick like your first top eight people that you really matched with. And, and then it slowly, you know, goes down to obviously one. Um, but it was just nuts of how they set up. They know they matched you. So like they oh. matched, you have to do this intense psych eval. You have to answer all these questions about, your perfect ideal person and they you know find other singles to match your answers so, so do they do that uh, do they find the girls first then and then they match the boys or is Honestly, it I have no clue I think I, I have no idea behind that I just know that they have like specific matchmakers to match interesting so it, I don't I you know what I don't know I should find that out because I don't even know if the men did that questionnaire yeah well okay because <laughs> obviously I had to get into the Facebook groups and mm -hmm. TikTok You're and find brave out one. I was a brave one <laughs> um it's all for you for research purposes because I just watched the show I'm like oh la, la, la. but yeah. I have no I had no idea there was this underbelly of the world yeah. oh for sure it's like a science <laughs> yeah. but something that they said like you know people scouted out, for example, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how, how do you even yeah. know? So I'm wondering yeah. if that happens, if it's just the males or just mm -hmm. the females or, but obviously you actually filled out a whole application. Yeah. So I, so a lot of the people got scouted um, mm -hmm. through LinkedIn, through Instagram, through TikTok, everything, like every person was different. I and my, and Laura, um, were I think one of the only girls who actually applied and I had all my, all my family members, my friends, flight attendants, they were saying, Oh, love is blind is coming to Charlotte. Like you need to apply to it. And I just thought, I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll apply. Why not? Um, and the next day I got a call back. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. So now like we're in the dates, <laughs> <laughs> taking you back to that place. Yeah. You're in the dates and you are prepping yourself. Um, I, I have to ask, why do they make you guys wear like outfits versus just like your PJs? But I, I was like, it has to be camera, right? Is that, is that, is that why? So it's so silly because everyone's like, why weren't you wearing sweats? Like no one, they can't even see you, but the world can. So <laughs> I, if I, I'm it. getting dragged for like actually like getting ready. If I weren't to get ready and go in with my hair on the top of my head, no makeup, I'd be getting dragged for that too. So <laughs> yeah, it's just so silly. And then like the whole day, so we all got ready, obviously. Um, so we have day dates and then we have night dates. Our night dates is when we can get in our cozies and kind of relax and just be chill. Cause those dates go from like, 9 p.m. to like 3 in the morning. What? Mm -hmm. Your girl was sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sleepy after 8. And this is this was before like me pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. Same. I can't even imagine. Yeah. I go to bed at 8. So I'm yeah. just like, and I'm there to like use my time efficiently. So I, you didn't have to night date. You had the option to, or you had the option to go home. I wanted to take full advantage of my time. We're only there for 10 days. Exactly. So uh, I wanted to be there as long as I could. I really wanted to get to the nitty gritty. Obviously I was in between, nobody knows, but I was in between a, a man the whole time. Like I had a, a man that I was deciding if they would fit into my life up until the end of the, till I left. Mm -hmm. So I dated um, three guys very seriously and they didn't bring up my third one, which his name was Ben. And I was oh. really, really trying to get to him, too. And um, I had to, like, dwindle down. It's a rating system. It's like the Hunger Games. So <laughs> I had to, you know, figure out, okay, who, this is horrible. Who am I voting out today? Mm -hmm. You know? And so I needed that time to really realize. So I was always night dating. So And then you wake up at 6 in the morning the next day. So I, would, I was running on three hours of sleep. Woof. <laughs> That's 
insane. And then plus on top of all of that, you guys are drinking. Mm-hmm. And I know you're not a big drinker. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like probably what you had to wake yeah. you up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, it is such a celebratory thing. Like all the girls are having mimosas in the morning. Mm. Like we're not working. Like we're on like this little like mission to find our hubbies. <laughs> like let's loosen up, you know? Yes. So like it was so natural to just like, be drinking all of us were doing it especially during the night dates there was one day where we all the girl all the guys and the girls it was our first night date ever and we all just were the drinks were flowing. we're all taking shots through the wall like it was just it was chaos and they didn't show that <laughs> <laughs> well what were some of your favorite questions that you got from some of your guys yeah i think you know, I had a lot of men come in with their mindset on the prize. They were ready to get down to the nitty gritty. I think a question that is aired that I asked Trevor, you know, what makes you the happiest? And then I asked Jimmy, like, what are your biggest accomplishments? Um, you know, a lot of people were asking so many heartfelt questions of like, what makes you the happiest? What makes you you? Like, tell me like five things that make Chelsea, Chelsea. And I just love that because it's, that's so special. And that's so, um, like such a question that I would love to get. <laughs> I feel like with you and Jimmy, they didn't show that much of the two of you in the pods. Oh, yeah. What was that experience for you? Because obviously, like you just said, you had three guys, mm-hmm. you know, that you were into yeah. and that were into you. Mm-hmm. What made Jimmy just like that person yeah. for you? Yeah. You know, he is so vibrant. He is just this crazy character that comes off like loud and he has this, you know, swag to him and he's just through the wall. He was selling himself like he is such a salesperson because he knew exactly what he was doing. He just had this like very serious, just sweet side to him that I just couldn't see past. And I wish that the world got to see more of our dates because they did go from, you know, building this friendship. Like we started off being really silly and really goofy. And I love that. And that's what I was looking for in my person. And that's why Trevor and I clicked so well. We went from being best friends, like instantly to really getting down to the serious stuff and the things that matter and that I want a husband and they didn't even show a second of that so we just had this connection that was undeniable and people are telling me like oh you said the Megan Fox thing to sway his his opinion I didn't because his opinion was already swayed at that point like that was just a little snippet of our four-hour date you know so it was just very disappointing to see that that wasn't shown. Yeah. You know what? Let's talk about that Megan Fox stuff because <laughs> you got dragged under the mud <laughs> with with the tooth falling out. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I just, like, pictured one of those fishes. I was just like, she's getting tugged. Oh How on gosh. earth? It was viral, though. Yeah, you know, it was, it was a viral moment. Yeah. I can't even imagine, though you know, what your family thought, how you felt, like, how were you able to move forward with that Mm -hmm. and just focus in on, you know, the task at hand, which was like, okay, like now I'm seeing everything out in the public and I just have to continue to be me. Yeah, for sure. I think the whole Megan Fox thing, it was just like, where the heck? Like that was a comment that happened that I never thought about again. And it's like, man, okay, like prepping for the show to, to release, I was like, okay, I said some silly things, but I don't think enough to like, you know, change my life, like absolutely break the internet. You know what I mean? I didn't think I said anything to that extent. I also had this whole ass relationship that I figured people would be more focused on and yeah. they were more focused on just this goofy comment that was made. And I just had to touch on that very briefly everyone was making those comments and we get it it's not the point of the show the point of the show is love is blind but every single person they they were drawing what each other thought they looked like like there were it was not you know I told Nick and Vanessa you guys need to make a written rule because I would have never been silly and like been goofy about that before dude like 
I mean, people tell me I'm a celebrity all the time, yeah. like like a, a celebrity lookalike all yeah. the time, and I'm I might not agree with them. Yeah. I'm also like, wow, I'm really flattered by that. Yeah, you know, like I would yeah. take stock in that and be like, shit, if someone said I looked like Megan Fox, <laughs> and first of all, you do have dark hair, you do have light eyes. I definitely see like in before, um, <laughs> you know, before in her younger career, like mm -hmm. I I really see the the, the similarities. Yeah. See, I don't. So I'm like exactly. Yo. But I was like, oh, I see like Adele like last yes. year's Grammys. Like that's yes. what I see. Yes, with I you, get her too. And I said that, and they didn't show that. I said Katy Perry, Adele, and Megan Fox, and they really harped on the Megan Fox thing. And they, you know, I told them too. If I really thought I looked like Megan Fox, I would have never. If I thought I was a spitting image of this woman, <laughs> I would have never said that. He yeah. just took what he wanted to hear and he ran with it. Yeah. 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 So uh, clearly, then that was something he must have talked about in his individual discussions, yeah. one on ones with his producers or yeah. the guys, because you just focus on that mm -hmm. when you definitely said other ones too. Yeah, um, you know they can roll back the tapes <laughs> roll and show back the tapes, but it it really cracked me up. That was such a viral moment, and mm -hmm. meanwhile, I was like, wait, I don't understand why Jimmy and Chelsea fell in love because. I'm not seeing as much of their yeah. dates. Yeah, yeah. They were definitely very pressed on showing mine and Trevor's connection and mm -hmm. his and Jess's. And that's just so unfortunate because we did have such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful growth. And, like, it was such a, an amazing story to see, like, where we started and the progress, like, how we progressed into where we were. Yeah, so something that they didn't get to see was obviously, like, your gift to Jimmy, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, a, I love that you posted this in one of your stories and it was, you know, a ticket. Yeah. Partner yeah. pass. Yeah. Partner pass. <laughs> Companion <laughs> pass. I just thought it was so you. Yeah. And could you share what that meant to you to give him that? Yeah. So a lot of people don't know that we bring two gifts. So we bring, um, uh, yeah, so we're allowed to bring two gifts. I gave, I couldn't decide between them. And they knew this. They were very up to date. They knew how I was feeling. Both of them knew I was figuring out both of them at that time. And you could give both of your gifts to one person or you can, it, it depends on what you want to do. And so I decided to give a gift to Trevor and a gift to Jimmy. And Jimmy decided not to give a gift to anyone. But this isn't, this isn't aired. He gives me a gift on proposal day. Um, but what was that? It was um, an, a gold necklace with the letter P on it for his last name. It was Aww, very sweet. It was really very sweet. sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I couldn't decide who, you know, uh, I wanted to give who the gift matched more. And I gave, you know, Trevor the tap bracelets, which were, which was so sweet. And that was such a sweet moment as well. But I also gave Jimmy a, I custom made it. And it was a boarding pass for um, my companion pass. Yeah. And I made, you know, to our honeymoon. It was very cute. It was very sweet. And I also got him a very, uh, personalized uh, passport holder and baggage tag. And I got me the same one. So it was just a sweet moment that I wish yeah. was shown. It's really thoughtful. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I struggled with uh, deciding what I was going to get either yeah. of them or whoever. <laughs> whoever your person yeah. was going to be. Yeah. Because yeah, you had to go into it and yeah. obviously... Mm -hmm think of these gifts so. yeah 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 I had to bring them from Charlotte yeah <laughs> so crazy well, kind of moving into you know the proposal mm -hmm. like how I mean you you've said this on your TikToks on your Instagram like it's high stakes mm -hmm. high stress mm -hmm. how were you able to manage that day because yeah. everyone proposes yeah. around the same time yeah, so you have, um, you know, your last date, which is day nine, uh, to really get down to the nitty gritty. And a lot of people already committed to one person, which was amazing. I and myself, or myself and Jimmy, we wanted to see it through. We wanted to, we both had other people we were dating, and I had to see it through, as did he. So on our last date, you know, you get down to it. And I didn't tell either one of them I love them. You know, Trevor told me very early on, I think day four, that he loved me. Um, and Jimmy didn't until that day. And I was really just waiting for Jimmy to kind of just give me the answers I needed. I'm still seeing Trevor through. 
Uh, but Trevor wasn't giving me something that I was waiting for Jimmy to give me. So what were you waiting for? I just needed Jimmy to open up and co not commit, but just give me a little more than he was because I was all in with him. And I knew mm. at this point I was really trying to see with Trevor that I just couldn't get past it. Um, you know, I don't talk about Trevor a lot, but Trevor, you know, was talking a lot about the cameras and the clout and the followers. And I tried so hard to see past it and I just couldn't. Yeah. 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 And you're big into working out and you're, you're a wellness buff mm -hmm. too, but it, did you feel like his world would have matched up with yours if you were to see it through? Mm -hmm. So this was actually a conversation with Trevor that we did have where I told him, yeah, I like wellness. I love, you know, going to the gym, but to your extent, I will never be there. I yeah. will never be that girl. And um, I told him up front, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what you expect from me, but I will never be the gym rat girly that mm -hmm. you are probably envisioning. And then his response was, well, my ex-girlfriend said the same thing. So I'm just like, I don't know if that's what you expect, but it's not gonna, it ain't going to be me, sis. So <laughs> <laughs> I support you, but no. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> when Jimmy finally said, I love you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you like what what was that sensation that was was it butterflies like so going into that that was our last date and when I I thought he was gonna tell me to kick rocks like I had no idea I just didn't know where his mentality was like I knew how I felt about him and right the date before that we just got to this level where I was like holy cow he painted this picture where I could see, I could see him. I could like envision him. And I was just trusting my heart and my gut and my, my mind and my heart was telling me, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. So when we had our last date before proposal day, there was just so many variables that were into play. And I thought, you know, he came in there and he sounded very upset. He had a very hard date with Jess and he was expressing and venting to me. And I thought, you know, I, I'm, he was going to say he realized, you know, Jess was who he was going for. And I just remember sitting there, like, having this pit in my stomach, like, I already know. Like, I already know, like, I want Jimmy, and I'm not going to stay unless it's Jimmy. I already knew in my heart. But I couldn't have that conversation with Trevor until I met with Jimmy to, like, you know, have that conversation. When he just flat out said he loved me, I, you know, you see it. That was my honest to God reaction. Like I did not expect that at mm. all. And it was just like disbelief. It was just, I was on cloud nine. Like it was just so sweet. And I just remember being like, there's no way. Like I, I wanted you to say this for so long and you did and I didn't expect it. And it was just so special. It really was. <laughs> I'm just going to because again, <laughs> what what you see online, everyone was saying. Well, if, and I Trevor even posted this. If I would have gone first, mm -hmm. I would have been chosen. Yeah, which I'm touching on that. That is so not fair to me to ask me if I went first. Would you have said yes? And I was just in disbelief that he even had the, you know, I, why would you ask me that? That's horrible. So. <laughs> Um, the answer would have been no. And, and you don't know going into proposal day, you don't know who's going to be first. So I was set on Jimmy. I knew mm -hmm. from my last day with Jimmy, I knew it was him. So going into proposal day, you don't know if you're going to be having a horrible conversation with someone breaking up with them, or if you're going to be engaged, you don't know who's first. Like how mental is that? It's mental. And you know, I get it too. Like the guys are mainly the ones that I think have proposed on this seat. Yeah. I'm sorry, all seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can't even imagine like being there just waiting to yeah. hear. Yeah. Oh, is there a better right. choice for you right. or not? Yeah, and totally. I'm just glad you clarified that because mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, no, it, it was Jimmy 100. Like yeah. that was your number one. Absolutely. And, it, Trevor was my number one up until the last day. And I oh, just really? needed, yeah. And, okay. and, and Jess was his number one. So people are like, oh, like you picked Jimmy just because of uh, uh, Jess. He picked me and I picked him. At the end of the day, like we both were on the same page that we yeah. needed to be on. 
And it's just so goofy to me. And I just wish they showed our story more. And I even said in my interview before, I said, if, you know, I'm really, really praying it's Trevor first so that I can get that hard conversation over with. Because I didn't want to go in from being all happy to then having this horrible conversation, you know. Yeah. And that's the way it went. And that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just have to deal with the cards that were dealt, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know. Everyone wants a little drama. Oh, don't worry. I gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, you gave all of it. <laughs> so let's start getting into some of that drama. Yeah. Because uh, I was watching this with my husband and I, you know, a lot of people I've talked to about this. We did not. I was very uncomfy. I'm going to use your word. <laughs> I don't care. I think it's perfect for this. I felt uncomfy <laughs> watching all of it because mm -hmm. I felt the women yeah. were just made to be stereotypes. A hundred percent. Demanding. Yeah. Um, demanding, insecure. That was mm -hmm. one that kept coming up for you. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, too emotional. And I was like, well, is that because they are pouring their hearts out to the guys mm -hmm. or that the guys are just saying things off camera. Like yeah. we didn't get a good sense. Yeah. I felt like the guys almost were emotionless and you yeah. can really see that in the kitchen scene with you guys. For sure. I For was sure. like, wait, I don't understand your actions because yeah. I didn't see it was very lovey dovey. Right. No. And that's something too, that I'm really glad you brought it up because there is so much that is not shown. And me having that conversation and expressing to him like, hey, you know, I'm this is the way I'm feeling. This is how my day has gone. This is these are real emotions. And he was sitting there trying to like sell himself like, no, I kissed you. No, I kissed you. Like, you don't understand. Like, we only have three weeks to show each other the kind of husband and wife we're going to be. And I am getting absolutely nothing from you. Yeah, you're telling me things I want to hear on camera but your actions are not matching your words and for me to speak up about that I, I have zero regrets I'm getting absolutely trashed for being insecure and and you know emotional I spoke up to my partner about how he was making me feel and the world is acting you know in such a way that they were there and they weren't so to my feelings were so valid and I stand by that to this day I wasn't getting my cup filled at all yeah and when that was something that was said a lot was why does Chelsea feel the need to constantly ask Jimmy for validation mm -hmm. you know and I felt that you were just there was something it seemed like that was missing mm -hmm. you know that he wasn't giving you yeah and yeah. so you were asking questions yeah. and you know, I also didn't think, and we'll talk about this more, but other than maybe a couple of nights when drinks were flowing, mm -hmm. like I felt you were very transparent with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing about me, too, is if I'm, you know, feeling a certain type of way, I will always express to you. I, we did have really good communication. Like we, we did, but his words just were not matching his actions. So, when it comes to me expressing certain concerns, like like I said, we only had three weeks to really figure it out. So if I'm feeling a certain type of way, you know, he was on his phone all the time. The only time he gave me affection and love was on camera. Um, we had heart to hearts off camera, but it was it was like I, I was on an emotional roller coaster because I'm not getting anything from you until we're on camera. So like when we're on camera, I'm getting you know, mm. told certain things. So I'm like, okay, maybe he does mean that. Like, I'm so oblivious, you know? And I was so hopeful, too, that he was meaning what he was saying, but you clearly see I know. I'm a smart woman. Well, also body language, 100%, people. A hundred percent. Like, Jimmy wasn't giving you that, no. that good, good body you, language. <laughs> no. <laughs> and any secure woman, like everyone, you know, like we said, everyone's dragging me for being insecure. I was in a relationship that made me feel insecure. I was not in a secure relationship. And so you didn't want that again. Hell no, I've already had that. And I was very open about that. So yeah, you know, I come off a certain type of way, but I'm trying to get married to this man. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not expressing concerns to you and 
you're trying to sell yourself that I gave you love. I kissed you twice. Like it was like he was digging in his pocket for, you know, receipts. You know what I mean? So, um, I think the delivery on my end wasn't good, but what you don't see is the delivery on his end was not good as well. And like you said too, off camera, he was kind of like non-existent. Yes. Like it was just a body in the same yes. space. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, and I kept seeing, I had rose colored glasses on, you know, and I kept seeing like, he would only give me love and affection on camera. And then I would get so excited. You know, I love that. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted this whole time. But off camera because we only filmed in the afternoons so like we what do you mean by that just just because of his work schedule so we would only film from like five to like 10 every afternoon so we had all day and he would go home and work a lot of the time when I would be at the townhouse cleaning and doing laundry and uh, everything else that a wife should be doing you know <laughs> <laughs> he was working I'll give him that everything but, a wife should be doing I mean Chelsea. I mean I mean come on I mean I'm trying to show no. you the kind of wife I want to be you want you want to be you wanted to be there and I know that you know you usually are flying yeah working on events yeah yeah like you don't usually have this time so you want to make sure that this is the right person. Yes, absolutely. And you wish that he would have done the same. Yeah, so it was just very, you know, it was just unfortunate that you guys didn't get to see what really was going on. And in that conversation, too, he he also mentions, you're in my space too much, which that that is what really triggered me is because I'm like, I have nowhere to go. Like, I, we moved in together. Like, I'm, this is our home together. And you're, I'm not in your office. Like, I'm doing stuff for us. So... Yeah, that was that was a very intense conversation that just got a little snippet of me being a crazy loony bird. <laughs> what what do you think made you guys lose that just lose connection like you had in the pods? Yeah. So the DR was amazing. It was absolutely wonderful. And then things started to take a turn when we got to Charlotte because we got our phones, we went back to normal life, we got around our friends. Uh, you know, we moved in together and that's, you know, that is zero to 100 so quick. So any other person is going to, of course, have their, you know, walls up. But this is a very unique situation where things move so fast. And, you know, I think it really, really made him scared. And he expressed that a lot. He talked about how this was so fast. It was which I'm just like, you knew this. You knew this. I've never understood that when mm -hmm. when guy or girl was like, oh my gosh, like, did it just hit you? Right. <laughs> yes. I'm, and then I just started to get like, kind of, I had a little bit of resentment when he would say this to me because I'm like, I'm here. I'm giving it my all. And you now. You didn't take flights or anything. No, I took that whole time off. And I literally was just putting my heart and my soul into this experiment. And now you're realizing that this is too fast. And he hated the cameras. And, you know, I had to tread very lightly with what I said around him because he was so concerned for his image. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why on camera, I mean, this is this is just from what I'm I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. on camera. He was, oh, I don't understand. I he'd be like Chelsea and I are great, you yeah. know, like at the DR. Or, yeah, which yeah. it was great in the DR, but those interviews threw me for a loop because I'm like, that's not what I was getting. Right. So, so the viewers are seeing like this great. Was great guy giving his all telling the right thing yeah and she's still nagging him i'm like there is a reason that i was you know saying you know and getting that validation and making sure he was good because off camera he wasn't he was not good so yeah. yeah i get you know i always get annoyed too when someone's like are you okay are you okay but like when that's how you're acting all of a sudden you know i'm concerned yeah yeah mm -hmm. When it's like, which which one's really you? Are you right. the cameraman? Yeah. Are you, you know. Exactly, or, yeah. Or like, Good Time Charlie? Like, yeah. What are you? Yeah, yeah. Or do you have Peter Pan syndrome? Like, right. that's exactly. a real thing, too. Yeah, for sure. So, 
kind of <laughs> going into the thick of it, you know, there was a lot that went down. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yes. And, you know, from the Ferris wheel, it was a cycle of disaster. Yeah, absolutely. It was a legitimate roller coaster. It was so up and down. Like, our ups were so great. And then our downs were down, mm-hmm. down bad. And that's emotionally draining. Yeah. Is to have this relationship that's so, so, so good. And then all of a sudden, it's so bad. And, you know, that that whole mess, you know, and then our arguments are, you know, very, I'm portrayed where I'm the one starting it. And it wasn't that way at all. Mm-hmm. So, you know. So how, how was it? Just so that, you know, the the people that were viewing the show, mm-hmm. it, it did look like it. Like, yeah. Just yeah. straight up. It just looked like, oh, she's nagging him mm-hmm. or, yeah. So in both of the argument scenes, you can see me having a conversation with my partner expressing certain things that I had concerns about. What's not shown is his rebuttal to them and his fight against them where, of course, it gets me irked. Of course, it gets me feeling a type of way where he was being defensive and trying to, you know, make himself look good and making me look bad. So he was saying all these hurtful things, which any normal human would react the way I did, where, you know, you're getting told you're clingy, you're getting told you're in their space too much, you're getting told all of these things, um, you know, that sucks to hear. So him not being shown in his response to me voicing a concern in my relationship was alarming. And it just, you know, I just wish that more of that context of that, those are both of the arguments were shown. Did he meet your parents? Cause that wasn't shown. He did meet my parents and it went great. And I, it just sucks. Like my parents had their guard up with him and they said, you know, you're a salesman. Like, we know you're just selling yourself to us. You can say whatever you want. They told him that to his face. Mm. And they they liked him, but they they knew how I was feeling. Yeah. Had your reservations. Yeah, for sure. And I was really trying to maneuver these reservations and see through them and see the whole experiment through. Mm -hmm. The things that I was really concerned about were things I can work on, like work on and work through with him. I had issues, he had issues. It was things that could have been, you know, very easily worked on together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with everything that has come about, like the big argument, mm-hmm. what, what did that feel like in the moment for you? Yeah, so the big argument was really revolved around how much he was going out and who he was spending his time with. Mm. And we had, that was a day he met my parents and it was a lovely day. And, you know, the dirty martinis were a flowing for everyone. It wasn't just me. And, you know, I will never deny me being in the wrong for the way that I delivered my concerns because it was not me. Mm -hmm. It was not, you know, accurate. And nobody should bring up conflict when they've been drinking. Totally. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's going to enhance absolutely everything. And again, I I mean, I said this at the beginning, like, you're not a big drinker. Yeah. So it probably hit you faster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) and a dirty martini. Like, I'm a sucker for them. but. Yeah, so, you know, we're having this great, great, great conversation, and we're on our patio, and he's telling me how much he loves me. He met my parents, and he loved my parents, and it made him love me more, and it was just a beautiful time. And then instantly, you can see it's very, you know, edited, of course, to me bringing up that morning, because the night before, this is not shown, and it's not talked about at all. He told, he stayed, asked if he could stay at his townhouse. He said, would you care if I go and stay at my own place? And I said, no, like I, I had a little wine night with the girls. I'll go home to the townhouse. I'm right down the street. 
you know, I'll go chill by myself. And you, you have your time to yourself. That's super healthy. Go ahead. He FaceTimed me in bed. <laughs> saying he was so tired. And we hang up. I just get back to the townhouse. We hang up and two minutes go by and he butt dials me. And you hear all his friends in his apartment, all the girls, everyone talking about the next bar they're going to. Mm. And when I tell you, I was just in disbelief. Like this fool had the nerve to call me, FaceTime me, let alone, you know, call me, but FaceTime me and tell me he's in his bed like it it was the most i was dumbfounded like i i didn't know what to do i was like how do i maneuver this situation do Mm -hmm. i call him out do i wait till tomorrow like what do i do so i am you know i made a video about this earlier i feel feelings big Mm -hmm. so of course i'm concerned i'm like i'm pissed and I called Laura and AD because I was with them right before this happened. And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? I didn't know what to do. Mm. Do I go home? Do I call him out? Like, what do I do? Do I show up at his apartment? Like, what, what do I do? And they were like, you know, tell, tell, text him. So I texted him and I said, I, I think I called him before I texted him and he didn't answer. And I texted him and said, you know, all that for what? For what? You could have just said, you know, I probably wouldn't have been happy, but it was also like a Tuesday and it was like cool. a, like 11 at night. So if you okay. just said, I want to go hang out with my friends, like, you know, I probably would have been like, what the hell? But not to that extreme, sir. You know, so. On a Tuesday. So that makes you think like, oh, he does this more often oh i was seeing it every single day wow. and his excuse or not excuse but his you know comeback was we were gone and i miss my friends and i want to see my friends but i'm also missing my friends yeah and i'm you know telling my friends i can't hang out with them so i can build a relationship with you i don't care if you go out it's not if you go out with the boys every now and then that's totally fine yeah. i want you to have your friends and your nights away from me that's very healthy but it was extreme and it doesn't show that the show doesn't even touch on that which that was one of our biggest issues yeah and didn't one of the cast members just bring that up too that yeah people yeah people had seen him out and just yeah yeah so our big fight pe- girls from the pods it was actually the same night that um J- uh jeremy and sarah ann met up so <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm getting messages saying like, hey, we see Jimmy, like, where are you? And that's, that's weird. You know, like my fiance's out, we're all at home, you know, trying to like build these relationships and they're just out raging. Like, so in our argument, I talk about like, that's not the kind of partner I want. And he was saying like, I told you I like to do wine nights. I like to go out every now and then I have a social life. Like it was not that, that would not have bothered me to this extent. like animal house. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So I wish that that was, you know, I, they made me look like I was a literal crazy person. And that was not even that wouldn't bother me, you know, and then our big fight leads to him and his girlfriends, which do you mind if I touch on that? Not at all. <laughs> um, it's not the point that you have girlfriends. That doesn't bother me at all. I have tons of guy friends what bothers me is that there's no boundaries and there was no respect Mm. they were facetiming and they were calling and they were texting all day every day and he would like need her advice for certain things in our relationship wasn't even that they were friends that wasn't the issue it was the respect i was i wasn't getting Mm. and he would go out with them often And I would always ask, like, okay, like, I'm going to go out with my girls. Like, I would love to link up. Like, you guys go do your thing, which that's very generous, I feel like. Like, like you guys go, you and your girls go do your thing. But, you know, maybe we can link up later so that you can meet my friends. And he never would. Hmm. 
Hmm. He never would. And then, you know, this went on and on and on multiple times. You know, this was three weeks of this going on. And it just, you know, I, I can't express this enough. It wasn't that he had girlfriends. It was the amount of boundaries he was lacking. And he didn't want to. What were some of the things that would happen that you felt like certain boundaries were kind of crossed? I mean, when it comes to being engaged, I think FaceTiming a female friend and asking her relationship advice and texting all day and hanging out when I'm like, because I had to go to training. So I flew out of town for. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A few nights or two nights. And he was with her and they were posting pictures. And it's like, so when I leave town, like you guys are hanging out. It's going to be a thing. Right. Right. And it just was just boundaries and, and disrespectful, I think. And I expressed it to him and his response to me was you think I hang out with her too much I'm going to hang out with her more mm. and that was all off camera there is one part on camera where he says you want me to pull back and I said well yeah I've expressed that to you and he said you've never expressed that to me and I said yes I did and he said I'm not pulling back that's on camera <laughs> I'm not pulling back yeah. well then okay so this is this is a question that I'm wondering like why did you stay with him mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's a very fair question and that's the the whole that's what I thought I was going to be absolutely dragged for is staying with someone who was so disrespectful and you know I think that we could have had a chance I think that we had so many, you know, like I said, our ups were really, really up, but our downs were down, down, down. And if he put the effort, the amount of effort that it looks like he's putting in, we could have totally made it. So I stayed with him because he was selling himself on camera to me that this is going to be amazing. This is going to be all right. He's giving me what I need right now. He's giving me what I need. And this is great. We also have, there's so much footage that they have not included and those moments were amazing. So the week before the wedding, um, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I, for a minute, I was going back and forth and just being like, this is shit, like this is shit, but I'm gonna try. I When I try, I put my all into everything. So I tried so hard to see past it and that week before the wedding, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is absolutely amazing. I could see it. And I was so hopeful. Like, you were invited to the wedding. Yeah. We were really excited. Yeah. We were really, really excited. Yeah. Uh, because you were super happy. You were sounding super happy. Yeah. And we just wanted, as long as you were happy, mm -hmm. we were Gucci, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I had these rose colored glasses on. Yeah. And I just saw, you know, like, I was so excited to be loved and it was so sad like looking back on it I'm like that is so sad the, uh, one thing that did make me tear up uh, was when you said you know it's like hard I don't feel loved mm -hmm. I want to feel loved yeah yeah I mean that's so shitty you know? it's a <laughs> shitty feeling yeah but you know I think too that uh, people have to understand like throughout your life you're gonna get hurt mm -hmm. throughout your life you're gonna have experiences yeah and I felt it was unfair to you because mm -hmm. everyone goes through this yeah and I think that was like the beautiful thing you were so authentic mm -hmm. you were willing to share your past you were willing to just be, be in the moment yeah and a lot of times you don't see that mm -hmm. and I think also that's why people were so attached to you yeah with the love is blind and why cra crazy things went viral because also though you were just being yourself yeah and a lot of women are too afraid to be themselves these mm -hmm. days because they're pretty you know social media mm -hmm. or the consumption that we mm -hmm. have with you know looking a certain way in front of other people mm -hmm. like it's it's really hard so although that was sad for me to see I'm really happy that you shared that yeah yeah I mean like this is my life. You know, I invited the camera crews and I signed my life away into doing this experiment. And I, I don't regret it. Of course not, but you are stepping into my life 
and I'm allowing you to step into my life. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is me being vulnerable and being open and honest and everyone has relationship issues. Mine just happened to be in front of the world. <laughs> right. And it was a shortened period of time. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that makes sense why you, you stuck it out and things were getting better mm-hmm. and then you blindsided you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, that was a doozy. Um, <laughs> I had no idea. You know, he told me thir- twice at least. It ended up being the third time when he called it off. Um, he couldn't see himself going to the altar. And I, which I never will do again, ever, I begged him to mm-hmm. see it through because mm-hmm. it was really early on. And I was like, please, like, like, don't give up on me now. You know, like, I'm a good woman. Let me show you. Like, let me sell myself, which how sad. I should never have to sell myself. So that was, you know, I've learned so much from that. So never again will I beg for a man and never again will I try to, like, get someone to stay you know like i have so much to offer and i'm never going to like beg someone to want to be with me that's just never what i'm going to do and he yeah he told me twice he said i don't see myself going to the altar i don't have it in me to bring your family out here because my whole family lives far away right and my friends they were going to be flying in too and he you know i will give him that he didn't want to put my the people who love me through that if he already knew Mm -hmm. But it was pretty early on, and I was like, just see it out. Like, let's just ride this out. Like, I change my mind every day at this point. Every other day, I'm like, yes, no, yes, no. Like, I'm going to ride this out, though. I'm going to see if I – it is a short amount of time. I really am going to put my all into it and see if I can get to that point with you. Right. You wanted to see the experiment through. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the (laughs) the date – where you know he calls it off and he just flat out says you know right before that I tell him you know I can see myself you know going through with this and he flat out just says you know I'm I'm not and I had to ask him like twice like so let me get this clear (laughs) you're you're not going to the altar right as we are walking into the theme park we were going over our songs for the reception he knew i think he said two days before that he was going to do it there and i'm like why did you wait till the cameras why did you wait and why did you and you i say this on camera like you just wanted to do this little fun date you wanted because we got a theme park to ourselves and it was amazing and i'm like you just wanted to come here and waste my time and, you know, I think he did it in the best way he thought was possible, but it really blindsided me. And I, you know, I, I reacted on emotions, of course. And, you know, he called off the wedding because I brought up his friend on camera. She brought herself on camera. Mm-hmm. Can we just say that? Like, yeah. let's, let's call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. Like, if you come on to the camera Mm -hmm. chances are people are going to perceive you one way or the other and the fact that she kept coming back Mm -hmm. into that realm Mm -hmm. it's going to impact well you're including yourself in our relationship exactly and therefore like i you know i agree on this aspect is you know i brought i brought up their sex life Mm -hmm. to the world that's right yeah and jimmy asked me specifically not to But, you know, I I regret bringing it up in that sense. But you have to understand this is my life. Yeah. This is my relationship. Just like I said before, I invited the cameras into my life, as did you. This is a serious problem that we're harping on. Just because the cameras are around, I'm not going to tread lightly. You know, like, this is our life. And how awful to, like have to live in the secrecy. I think at one point I tell him too, like your biggest, deepest secret is that you had sex with your friend. Like what? (laughs) I, you know, I, I apologize to her and I apologize to him profusely. 
the way the fashion it was done in was not fair to either of them. But once again, you are including yourself in, in our relationship at this point. Like this is an issue mm. and it needed to be talked about. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Now, if that wouldn't have happened, do you think that you guys would have moved forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that we were in such a good spot. This was three days before the wedding. So we were in such a good, good spot. At that point, I remember telling everyone, because that was the day our invitations went out. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> booked a hotel. Oh, I remember. I oh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember being so embarrassed to have to tell you, to have yeah. to tell everyone that was coming you know, weddings off, you know what I mean? So that was absolutely mortifying. Um, cause you know, I can't express this enough. I was waiting until the last second to make my decision. And like I said, every other day was a different answer for me. I felt so confident at that point. I thought we worked past that whole argument. Um, and I'm not that like his feelings were valid. Yeah. He had every right to be upset at the situation, but to call off our wedding for something when I forgave you for so many things and, you know, I worked past all of our issues, but this one thing you just can't get past. Mm. And, I, you know, that's that's not someone I want to be with. Marriage is hard. Marriage is very, very hard. And if that's something that you're not willing to work past, like you did me a solid yeah, hundred man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it is really tough. Marriage is tough, and that's something that you know doesn't really get portrayed on a show. Mm-hmm. Um, I did think it was great how Amy and Johnny like mm-hmm. kind of went through that yeah. and and talked about real things mm-hmm. that really mattered. Yeah, and that was something when I would watch, I was like, oh, Jimmy's not really giving that to you. Yeah, but at the same time, like. He was saying all the right things, like I said earlier. Would you, though, have said if, if, like, take the argument out of the equation Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe even the girlfriends Mm -hmm. out of the equation, like it was a normal friendship, whatever, would you have said yes, do you think, Mm -hmm. when walking down the aisle? So... At the time, I I wanted to say yes, Mm -hmm. and I, in my heart, figured that was the best answer for me. I felt like he challenged me in a way that I really loved. Looking back on it, thank the Lord. And, you know, we'll touch on this later. Him and I are fine nowadays, but, like, thank God, because we wouldn't have worked. I had these, you know, I was fishing for love. Yeah. And I would never want to do that with my partner. Yeah, you have to know each other's love languages. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we just were on two totally different wavelengths where, like, we just couldn't get on the same one. And I wasn't seeing that. Yeah. I was just seeing what I wanted to see. Rose tinted glasses, like you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just seeing and hearing what I wanted to hear. And I wasn't getting those actions to match. And I just wasn't realizing that. So let's get into the reunion a little bit. Mm-hmm. Just happened. Yeah. Holy crap. Basically, like, flew here, landed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't usually... I love the reunions because of, you know, what people have to say in it. But mm-hmm. the questions usually that I want to get asked never yeah. do. So yeah. I've got a couple of questions for mm-hmm. you. Like, regarding Jimmy and your relationship. hmm you know, what do you feel you wish people could have taken away more from your relationship that wasn't shown? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we had such a good relationship and good foundation, but the it's, I can't even express or explain this because it doesn't make sense to me. The communication was there, but it wasn't. It was like he... He just wasn't ready to be married, and I wish that he saved me time and saved me, you know, a lot of heartache 
But I do wish that people could see the love that we did have for each other because it was there. Mm -hmm. It just was, you know, far and few between. (laughs) But that would have just been, you know, it would have made sense. Our story would have made sense rather than me constantly nagging Mm -hmm. you know that wasn't our relationship yeah and was he super focused on the looks like things (laughs) were perceived in the show yeah you know what's so funny about that is that I had no idea about his perception of looks Mm. I had no clue like he he made a comment one time when we were in the DR about how he likes smaller girls but people were talking about our reunion or our reveal and I'm like I thought it was the sweetest moment. I'm so Delulu. I thought it was so sweet and heartfelt. And I just like, I was so, I felt so in love after that because I am dumb. (laughs) Well, no, again, I I mean, it's an exciting thing. Like in the moment, like you guys are coming towards each other. You're seeing each other for the first time. Yeah. And I just felt like there were certain angles or like, I was like, wait, is he into it? Is he right. not into it? Yeah. So I was yeah. left with questions too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. It was just so weird. But, you know, when it comes to like, he, you know, he, he said he likes smaller girls. And he explained himself. But he says, I like my girls smaller. Hmm. We'll give him that. Um, and, you know, he always would tell me he, he thought I was pretty. But it almost set seemed like it was forced but I didn't even realize it you know like I don't know you felt something though that wasn't a hundred percent right my intuition yes is always right and you just have to listen to it from now on <laughs> holy cow yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I was just hoping that my intuition wasn't right and it was just me being you know insecure but <laughs> it was my intuition at the end of the day yeah no I, I literally think that's why I kept seeing you ask questions. Yeah. You're just trying to go based on your your gut, your yeah. intuition. Yeah. Do you feel like you were portrayed correctly? Absolutely not. No way. I think that I am a strong, confident, you know, I am, I've never struggled like that severely with insecurities. I was placed in a situation that heightened my insecurities, of course. That's normal. That's natural. If you don't have insecurities in a situation like this, something's wrong with you. Like something is wrong if you don't have a slight, you know, heightened insecurity. There's there's that's normal. I think for them to show me as that being my story is not accurate at all. I think they showed me as this, you know, very insecure fishing for compliments, just everything that I've never done in my life. Uh, You know, I did struggle with feeling loved, but I have done so much work and inner work on myself. And, you know, this whole journey has made me the woman I am today. And I was confident before, but I am on a whole other level (laughs) of like how I feel about myself, you know, so... Um, I just wish that that wasn't my story. Yeah. Well, I remember, too, honestly, the day that, because I ended up flying out to Charlotte, Mm -hmm. and I was just like, let's just, and your wedding, what was supposed to be your wedding day? Yeah. We just got some massages Mm -hmm. and had lunch, Mm -hmm. had dirty martinis, a classy amount. Yes. (laughs) And we just, you know... It just had a wonderful time, but something that really struck me was even though you went through this crazy experience, you're like, I learned a lot about myself. Mm-hmm. Could you share like some of the things that you learned from doing this experiment? Yeah, yeah. I really, I learned how far I can go and how strong I am. I did not realize, I was worried about the backlash. You know, you could do anything that, you know, someone's going to find something they don't like. Did not think it was going to be this intense and this loud. I've learned I am so much stronger than I thought I was. You know, I knew I was strong, but holy cow, maneuvering this journey has just been nuts from the day it started. You know, like just 
realizing on an emotional level how much I can take and how much I'm willing to go and how far I'm willing to go. And, you know, I put my all into it and I've just, I've, I'm so proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know you showed your heart and mm -hmm. you wore it on your sleeve. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, there was fire, mm -hmm. but you know, I just love that you sprinkled your Chelsea. Yeah. Your Chelsea-ness. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they showed more of that too. Yeah. Like it was very, it was such a fun journey and you know, the crew was amazing and I wouldn't change my outlook, my outcome for anything. You know, everything happens for a reason. I love Jimmy. Jimmy's a wonderful human and I'm so grateful that he was a part of this with me. He just wasn't my person. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you wish would have been talked about more at the reunion? I wish that we touched more on mine and Jimmy's relationship. We really didn't get too into the nitty gritty. There was so much to talk about and say, um, you know, talking about why I was feeling this type of way. We didn't talk about, you know, there wasn't, there was so much missing from our story. And I just come off this crazy, emotional, insecure woman. And that is the complete opposite. So I just wish that I got to touch a little more on that. Right. Um, also, you know, just the co-ed friendship. That wasn't talked about, and that's something that's really big in, in our story, too, is that I'm insecure with my partner being friends with another, you know, the opposite sex, and that's not the case at all. Right. So, but at the same time, you know, he did give you it. He gave you a reason to feel 100%. a little bit insecure right. about that. Yeah, I mean that, like going back to boundaries and respect. That's yep. the only thing we're all we you're yeah. for too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you feel now with like guy girl friendships? I feel great. You know, just still going back to it. It's just you can have. I have so I have a handful of guy friends that love and and care for me so deeply. One of them that is brought up in the show is my ex-boyfriend. And we are really good friends. He has a baby on the way, he's married. Like we have a wonderful friendship. It comes down to respect for my partner, respect for his partner and boundaries. And that's it. It's not that hard. No. <laughs> it's such an easy formula that like people think is just absolutely mind blowing. I have nothing wrong with co-ed friendships at yeah. all. It's just, boundaries and respect mm. yeah. 100% yeah so with the reunion was there anything that surprised you by the other couples um yeah definitely I think something that was really really kind of hard to watch was the Laura and Jeremy situation mm. you know we all knew that that crazy crazy situation happened but we did not you know, to see it is a whole other thing. Laura just held herself with such grace, came in there guns a blazing. She was such a boss and she ate the conversation and she just totally, you know, <laughs> said her piece and she she said exactly what she needed to say and it was it was amazing to see women power, girl power. <laughs> what parts of the other people's relationships really moved you? Seeing Amy and Johnny, it's just wonderful. It's though th they're really close friends of mine, and to see them this past year just blossom mm -hmm. and just how in love they are, it just shows you this experiment works. Yeah, it's so so accurate. It can work if you find the right person, and you know they did so good. Johnny was actually a backup. He was a, like, what? yeah, he wasn't a part of the original cast. Wow. Mm hmm So he came, and he's just a wonderful, Johnny was my number four, and we actually cut ties because I was, he didn't like that I was friends with my ex-boyfriend. Respect. Right. Respect. Yeah. You know? Um, and now look at him. Everything happens for a reason. They're exactly. just so in love, and it's so amazing to just see it. Because Amy's the most amazing woman out there. That's awesome. You know, it's interesting because some of like the other season edits, I think of like Kwame, Kwame and uh, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. 
she's awesome. Yeah. I, but they had a horrible edit. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like why, why would they choose each other? Yeah. And I'm like, no, it makes so much sense. Totally. And yeah. you know, I think that's something that we should all be careful of when watching mm-hmm. Love Is Blind because just realizing that you guys are people you're going through these real relationships these Mm -hmm. struggles Mm -hmm. but we all also have gone through these struggles yeah yeah for sure it's just televised Mm -hmm. you know the world is watching (laughs) so i've got one last one for you Chels. okay you've been doing so great (laughs) i really appreciate you being authentic and like sharing some tea with us on things it's been awesome and yeah. informative for all of us that are like yeah what actually goes on mm-hmm. with this mm-hmm. so how has stress served you through this whole love is blind process mm-hmm. I think stress has really added a you know heightened sense of why am I feeling this way why am I feeling this stress and anxious feeling in this relationship it really made me kind of open my eyes to see certain things that I don't think I was seeing. I think stress really like, there's a re- my body's telling me something's not aligning. So pay attention to that right now. You shouldn't have to feel those feelings in any relationship. So having that, you know, stress and anxious and, you know, anxious attachment and all that stuff just really kind of opened a new viewpoint on my relationship that I just don't think I was seeing or wanted to see. So yeah, that just really guided me into how I was feeling. <laughs> well, I'm so appreciative of you being here with me today. And yeah, I just, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully good. Hopefully they drop the Megan Fox thing soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll see about that. I have a feeling this is going to be... My forte, like, freaking attached to my name now. Yeah, but now we've got other people that are going to say, they're like, oh, now they're going to compare you to Tell. And yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Katie Perry. But you know what? It's That's all what it fun. Is. In the end, yeah. it's it's TV. That's and exactly it. You brought the ratings, girl. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome for your service. My service. <laughs> 